three years ago on this stage, on this very same stage, I talked about identity and authenticity, uh, about finding a passion and pursuing it. And I ended on a note saying that I hadn't quite found my passion. And the project I'm going to talk about today is a continuation of that quest. I still haven't found my passion, but I'm working towards it. I'd like to share some insights. So you probably figure out from this title what the project is. We bought a school bus. Now, why did we buy a school bus? Because we had this grand idea of converting it into an RV, a tiny home, and go see the world in it. Well, if that's the case, why not just uh, buy an RV? Why buy a school bus? Well, one, it looks much prettier. And come on, who, who can't like that? But um, so as Tam introduced me, I work for the Center for the Edge, and we talk about how the world's changing. One of the things we've been saying is that anyone can pick up any new skill, and anyone can learn how to do something big. Well, I'm testing that because I'm not a gearhead, I'm not a carpenter, I don't know buses, I don't know RVs, so I'm going to see if that's really true. Um, I also hate how our society, how much we consume and dispose of things. And I'm a big fan of upcycling. So upcycling is taking an old object and converting it into something new, giving it a new lease of life. I'd like to do that to this bus. We also live in San Francisco. It's very expensive. Three kids. We want to get them out. If not, you're kind of living in an apartment and paying high rent for the pool and the gym that you don't use. So maybe we'll get out. But all of these things are very logical. These are the things that you make up to say, like, hey, this is why we should do it. This is why it's a good idea. But there's something more. There's a gut instinct. I really wanted to do this project. I was intangibly drawn to this bus. And for once, I listened to that. So a few stories I want to go through. Um, the first one is on trust. So I bought this bus on Craigslist. Of course, it's San Francisco, right? Why not? And uh, we, we drove up about an hour north to this little town called Cotardi. And this crusty old man had this yard full of buses, police cars. My five-year-old loved it. We saw the bus. We loved it. We gave him a deposit. We came back in a week. We gave him the rest of the money in cash. He gave us a piece of paper, which turned out to be the title. And he said, great. We had a handshake, and we had a bus. We left the bus there, went back, and the next task was to register this bus. And I've been reading all the forums, and I even went to the DMV in Oakland, and nobody could quite figure out how you register a bus that you're going to convert into an RV. This wasn't that easy. So I called Larry, the crusty old guy, and he said, yeah, don't worry about any of that. Just, there's a small DMV here in town. Just make an appointment. Come to that. <laughs> so we did. We just did that. And he said, don't say much. And I didn't. But, um, <laughs> So I spent that whole week and the hour driving up there just with self-doubt saying, like, we didn't, there's nothing to transact. There's nothing to say that I even gave him money. I have a piece of paper. That's all it is. Uh, I tr and why am I trusting this guy that I've met for the first time in my life? But I did what he said. I walked up and just handed the piece of paper, didn't say anything. And he said, registration? I said, yes. And we walked away with plates 10 minutes later. <laughs> and no, we, we didn't even have the bus there. Uh, so we got the plates. And my trust has been abused since. You know, we got repairs onto the bus that you know, didn't really need. But I'm pledging to go to lead this project with trust, trusting people, because it does something to your soul. It's good for you. Second story is around humility. I was driving from Oakland to San Francisco, trying to get the bus to San Francisco. Going just before the Bay Bridge, I'm like, this isn't going to make it. This doesn't sound right. I pulled off the highway, which is a good thing, because it didn't make it. It spluttered and died on the side of the road. Um, couldn't figure it out, had to leave it there overnight, had to get my brother to come rescue me. Um, next day, I went with a friend of mine, a mechanic, and we tried debugging the whole system, couldn't get it to work. Finally, like, at the end of the day, we got it running. We drove a mile, and it broke down again. <laughs> Middle of the street, Oakland, it's getting dark. We can't find anyone to tow us, so we, we start debugging again. And he points on it and says, hey, what's that little thing? There's a little uh, stick underneath the steering wheel, which is missing a knob. Turns out it's a choke. I had pulled the choke plotted the thing, and that's why it wasn't running. And this is complete rookie error. And at this point, this is the equivalent of not plugging your computer in and asking why it died. <laughs> at this point, I have a whole bunch of people following this project on Facebook, and they're all asking, well, what, what happened? And I had to fess up and say, it was user error. <laughs> I pulled the choke, and that, that's what it was. Um, so humility. I'm, I'm going to be humbled many more times by this project before it's done. 
the most important one was about community. Um, it, it was a validation for the power and the need for community. Now, I don't have a lot of time to work on this project. I've got three kids and a job that doesn't give me too much time to work on this. So every week, week and a half, I'd uh, reach out and just send a posting out on Facebook and say, hey, I'm going to work on the bus. Anyone want to come help? And every week, people turned up. Actually, three who's in the audience came twice. People would turn up, and they would give us their time. This project was no longer mine. It's now a communal project. And it's so much more meaningful for being so. So some final thoughts. I'm going to go back to the theme that, we, uh, that is today, make and believe. Believing is important. Believing in the potential for something, it's very important. Making is equally important because making is putting energy towards pursuing that belief. Making is what makes that belief bloom. It's what draws people to it, and it's what makes that belief come alive. And when you pursue your own belief, you're actually empowering others around you to pursue their own passions and beliefs as well. So making and believing, very important. Second thing, um, Jessica Jackley, uh, the co-founder of Kiva, in a commencement speech a few years ago, made this uh, statement that stuck with me. Build a life rich in the currencies that matter. It's a really cool statement. And if you think of this project, if you think of it financially, I'm going to lose money on this project. I'm going to lose sleep on this project. But if you think of currencies outside of money, physical health, mental health, um, social values, community values, it's a very rich project. So the next time you think of doing something, think of the value of a project outside of money. And the last thought is give your heart a chance. Nine times out of 10, your head gets, the, gets its way. So once in a while, give your heart a chance. Do that thing that just makes no sense. It's not logical, but that you're emotionally attracted to. It, you know, take that uh, trip around the world you wanted to. Climb high mountains. Go build that off-grid cabin. Whatever you're dreaming of, do that. Trust people along the way. It will humble you, but you'll build a community around you that matters. Um, believe in something. Go make it happen. So, Myself and our bus, they're both works in progress. I would love your help to make us both be what we could be. One last thing. I was supposed to bring the bus here. The reason I was late getting here, it broke down. <laughs> down the street, less than half a mile away, just on the other side of the highway, it broke down. Um, the police had to come actually to push the bus off to the side, and I got a friend to bring me here so I could get here to talk. So it is an ongoing project. <laughs> Thank you.